you know, you can have family stay over for uh, as long as they want, you know, they can stay over for like an hour and stuff, yeah. you know. You said as long as they want for, for an, an hour. hour. Yeah. Yeah, man, look, have your way in the room. You can go to sleep, take a nap, take a shower. You know, they come in at 3 o'clock, they leave at 3.59. What up, people? Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Uh, this is Jay, a lovely wife, kid, and we are here. What is week three, week four in quarantine? Week four in quarantine, uh, trying to stay healthy, trying to uh, survive, not get bored, get agitated on or each other nerves. So. Today will be a special edition of Game Night. So this type of game will be called This or That. So basically This or That is a series of questions. What are you, um, what would you rather have? Would you rather have A or would you rather have B? And it's a really simple game um, right now. I just want to kind of get each other thoughts, see what you know things look like and just have fun. There's no, you know, real rules to it other than you can't have both. You have to have one or the, or the other. So, um, so we're going to get to it uh, for you guys watching at home. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, uh, put your comments below. Uh, see what was your uh, answers to the questions. Uh, also, you know, what would you like to see, you know, if you want to do a con continuation. You know, just let us know. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Right, so the first this or that question is, wake up in the morning and you, you feeling thirsty, feeling a little parched, you know, I can go for some water, some orange juice, or whatever. First question, if you can only have one drink for the rest of your life, either coffee or tea, that means breakfast, lunch, dinner, afternoon, when you get thirsty for no reason. Um, which one would you rather have? Coffee or tea? I think I like tea more than I like coffee. I like tea more than I like coffee. There are so many different versions of tea than it is with coffee for me. I'm not saying that is, you know, that's what the, you know, what the world said and so that's 100% facts. As far as me, in my opinion, my taste buds, if I had to wake up in the morning, go to bed, uh, have dinner, have lunch, whatever, just think about that. If I, I like to drink a little something before I go to uh, sleep, so what do I look like drinking coffee right before I go to bed? It doesn't make sense. So that's why I pick tea for my first answer. What about you? Um, I would pick tea. And I would pick tea because um, it's a lot easier on my stomach. I feel like if you have coffee on an empty stomach, you can have some some dire issues. But tea is very soothing. Um, it can wake you up, put you to sleep. I feel like coffee is kind of one note. Um, not in one note in taste, but one note in its ability. I don't think coffee is meant to make you go to sleep, whereas tea is kind of versatile. Wake you up, go to sleep, calm you down, energize you. Um, and it's not as um, rough on your stomach, so. Next question. All right, moving right along. Music. We all love music. There's all types of genres out there. Uh, the music that puts you in the mood, uh, either working out, relaxing, on your way home, driving, um, just whatever. You just feel like listening to music. You don't feel like turning on the TV all the time. Um, so, this question will be, as far as, as far as music goes, if you could only choose between Christian rap and worship music, what would you choose? I would probably pick worship 
and the reason I would pick worship is because I feel like when it comes to music, um, the whole point of both Christian rap and worship is to glorify God. The other reasons that we choose to use it might be for the gym or during a road trip, but the intent of the music is to worship God. So I feel like if, if these are my choices and I'm looking at how can I reverence God through my music, I would have to pick worship. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm going to the gym, I can still use that same worship beat. I can still use it as an instrumental. I can speed up the same worship beat. But if I have Christian rap, I mean, I don't see how I could get into a state of reverence and surrender doing rap. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible, um, but as far as entering into a deeper level of my time, right after journaling, for example, I don't really see myself turning on Christian rap to like get me into like a surrendered mode unto God. So I feel like I have a little bit more versatility if I were to pick worship music. So basically, you want to be in a the state of mind of being surrendered to God and just be in that moment, just just be in His basking His glory and just just be up lay before God and like, hey, this is this is my worship. Exactly. That's that's what our life is. Our life is worship unto God. So I would choose worship. That is a very very good answer. I like it however i'll choose christian rap now hear me out hear me out the reason why i pick christian rap over worship music is because i can sing worship music on my all time i can turn off the rap and i can sing worship music on my own whether it's from 1955 worship music or to today's modern art, you know, here's my worship, all of my worship. You know, I can sing that on my own. So you can't rap on your own? No, it's not the same because when I go to the gym, I can't rap like, oh yeah, get this last set. It, it doesn't make this, it, it, it's not the same. And when it comes to working out, I feel like, you know, I feel like there's a lot more stuff that I can do with the type of music I listen to. So you're saying you work out more than you reverence God? I, what I'm saying is, as far as going about my day, right. I like to be upbeat. I like to there's be... There's upbeat worship music. There is upbeat worship music, but at, what I'm saying is, I feel like I can sing. Me singing will do more as far as reverence, uh, reverence to God and giving God the glory. However, when it comes to me in my everyday life and me going into traffic, me uh, trying to get hyped to go to the gym, or again, I'm going to where, uh, going to like, you know, a date night, or whatever. You know, so, I want to, I, that's what I feel like. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but that's what I feel like. If you can only pick one place to live, and the options are, would it be Malibu? Ocean side, ocean front property, uh, hanging off like a cliff, like some James Bond type movie stuff, um, or Miami Beach on a private island. You're the only person there. You have wonderful ocean views all the way around. Um, or the penthouse suite in the tallest building of New York City, New York, New York. Um, or you can live in a mansion in um, in Atlanta. Or in the um, in the Georgia area, um, Dubois, where you have a also <laughs> Dubois. Dubois, where you have a penthouse suite with 360 views. That means everywhere you turn, you have a picture of the ocean. All right, Puerto Rico in the rainforest, or in the Bahamas, anywhere, anywhere in the Bahamas. Well, There's no limit. I would have last time. So, all right. I think for me, I think for me, I think I would say a mansion in Atlanta. Now, the reason why I say that, I feel like in Georgia, you get a lot more bang for your buck. And I feel like I, I will be living out, I guess like my fantasy life, like you feel like you, 
like you a, a superstar. Like I want to feel like I want to feel like I own the city. You know, I don't want to feel like I don't have like a like I just have a home in this area. Like nah, I own this part of the city. Like I own this land compared to like hey you own this property. And I don't know if that that would make no sense, but to me. I feel like if I'm sitting on by this huge acre or these huge acres, it will mean more than sitting in a penthouse suite or sitting in a um, quote unquote uh, apartment. You so know. why not the private island? Um, uh, going on based on what you said? Because I'm, I am from Florida and I live in Miami, my whole childhood life, and I feel like I have saw Miami, seen Miami, excuse me, um, and I I know that Miami is wonderful. However, at certain parts of time of the of a uh, season, it can get a little, you know, a little crazy down there. So that's why I picked Miami. I, I didn't want to. Malibu oceanfront property is cool, but I feel like both our families are so far away. Um, again, my uh, Miami, I'm from here, New York. No, you don't have to go to the uh, but I was just, you know, I was pretty much given. <laughs> that's why. That's why. Okay. Um, I would also pick Atlanta. Um, I feel like. Um, Home-wise, I've seen a lot of the homes in other places, Bahamas, Puerto Rico, I've never been to Dubai. I've seen homes in New York, Miami, um, and um, also even Malibu. And I feel like I am the same with you. Like I want more for my, my money um, as far as the amount of house that you get for the amount of land. Um, relative to the price that you pay. Mm -hmm. um, Atlanta feels more homey. Um, it feels more um, like you like you were saying that you just you own a lot more. Um, and just the whole vibe of Atlanta. I feel like it kind of outdoes the whole island life. Um, and uh, Puerto Rico, Bahamas, places like that, they have a lot of um, different things that can happen on those islands. I know from working there that when things go down, it, you know, it's very hard to get people to work there. It's hard to get simple things like electricians and like just things that they have to kind of work through getting mail there and sort, you know, things like that, especially from a hotel perspective. Um, it's not as simple as you would think. So. If you're just visiting, you can kind of have that more of a luxurious life. But once you start living there like day to day and meeting those essential functions, you kind of have to know what it is to live island life. And I didn't, I don't prefer that. So out of the list, I would choose Atlanta. If you had to, uh, if you had to choose between getting chauffeured in a Rolls Royce mm -hmm. or having two, owning two of your dream cars, but no chauffeur, that means you gotta drive yourself everywhere. Which one would you rather have? Now, going to work, taking road trips, going to the store, go to your auntie mammy house, whoever, chauffeur or having your dream car. Um, I went first, or you went first. No, you went first. All right, for me, I want to say I take the uh, my dream car because I don't mind driving. As much as I would love to have somebody drive me around in a nice car, I feel like I would love to drive my dream car, dream cars, and just be being able to have that luxury of just looking in the yard and going, oh yeah, it's still there? Yeah, that's mine. That's mine, all right. I think chauffeur is nice, and I think, you know, being able, I, I like being on the road. I like, I'm a car guy. I like cars. So I think for me, I would like to drive my own toys than to have somebody drive my toy for me. 
I am going to go the opposite because while I do not mind driving, there are just days that I don't want to drive. So, um, for example, if I'm out at the grocery store, a full Costco haul, I'm in the store for two hours going down my list and then I walk in the house and as I'm putting the groceries up, I realize I forgot eggs. That second trip out is like, no, like it's the worst feeling. Like, and if you don't go, it's like you start thinking about later on down the week, like how can you add it back in the week? Like, ah, don't want to do it on Monday. Don't want to wake up early to get there before work. Like, if I had a chauffeur, um, you know, just, just circle me on back around. It's just, let's mind work. Um, I imagine what chauffeur, I'm getting help with my luggage, um, getting doors open, um, getting my car parked when I'm in the city or trying to valet it and at a restaurant or um, parallel parking. Like, it's just so many things that I wouldn't have to worry about. And I feel like, you know, finding, especially in downtown areas, like, um, you know, meter parking and things like that, washing the car. I feel like my chauffeur would come with like additional benefits because if he's driving the car or she's driving the car every day, she's clearly, or he's clearly gonna also wash it because clearly he's gonna need to clean it, you know, keep it keep it nice, he's the chauffeur. Just so many different things. I don't have to worry about gas. I mean, I'm just thinking my chauffeur is just gonna do it all. Yeah, I feel like I need to read think my life because that's what I've been doing the whole time. I've been gassing up the car, washing it, oil change, taking it for maintenance. Change, yeah, all those things. Your chauffeur would now be responsible for that. So am I your husband or am I your chauffeur? Next question. What do you mean next question? You, you ain't going to slide. We, now we're going to talk about this. You ain't going to just slide past that. Tell them mm. Next question. Oh, so you just going to hit next question. You gonna hit next track, huh? Oh, okay, just next track. Okay, next track. All right. Um, last question. All right. So, you um, you're getting ready to be born, uh, born in this world. Your mother and your father got together, and they started having a baby. And the Lord came to you right before you've been born and said, "Son, daughter, I'm gonna give you one option. You can go into this world one or two ways. You can either go." to be born into this world as a natural born baby, all the way to get old and then you come to heaven, right? Or you can start as an old adult, like whatever is like 99, 100 years old, whatever. You can start as an old adult, all the way down to you get to a newborn and then you go to heaven. Which one would you do? Oh, uh, all right, so for me, I I think I will say I will want to be old before um, be old and go to a new one because I will love to experience the the world first, uh, being able to have more time and have that um, relationship with my my family. Uh, with my, my wife uh, more just to have that first and just working your way down it's like okay you know I have you know when I'm 60 you know I'll, I learned how to process the world at 50 you know I can do a little more 40 I can you know first, I think for me I, I think I'll probably have a more fun time Going from old to new. So, uh, this a follow-up question. How would you feel leaving me? Because at that point, if you would, we would essentially be walking away from each other, but you would still be living on the earth as opposed to us, like, dying together. And then there's, there was nothing after that for either one of us. But, like, you wouldn't be like, okay, I'm turning you're 50 and now you're turning 40 and we didn't meet yet or we're not, you know what I mean? Like, how would... How would you feel like being on the earth knowing that you were just married? Let's say we had kids, a house, like all this, and you're like, all right, bye, going to go to high school now. 
I'm, because it's a time, like, like the Bible said, it's a time and place for everything. It's like, I know. What you going to ask you? How would you feel? I mean, I would feel the same way if I was going, if I was going from from new to old, because I'm a no. Like, hey, around this time, you know, we're going to have to depart, and like you're going to leave me. Compared to like, hey, I'd rather know that you're okay and that you're somewhere on this earth compared to I'm leaving the earth and I don't know that you're okay or vice versa. Like, hey, but you will know that I'm okay because you're you're downgrading your life. But but I just gonna you you're to gonna have I'm, you're gonna be like you're gonna be in my mind like how I wouldn't be in your mind. That's that's the thing. That's that's what I'm trying to say. If you're married. And then you're saying you're going to degress your life. You're going to go from a 50-year-old married man to a 20-year-old college student to a 16-year-old in high school. You're not going to have the, like, are you saying that as you degress in life, you're still keeping the same memories? Yeah. Okay. So you are going to be in high school knowing that you were just a 50-year-old man. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I misunderstood. The it'll question. be it'll be the it'll be the uh, what's the um, thing called the Benjamin the opposite of Benjamin Button disease. I thought that was the Benjamin Button disease though. Well, it'll be well they start off as a baby and then they get older. Well, that's what we all do. We start well, off as a baby. I was and starting off as older and I was going. You talking about what you would be doing? Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. What about you? Um, I would choose to be older because I feel like, well, first of all, I had a question and correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm starting out as an adult, mm -hmm. I don't have all of the knowledge that it would have taken me to acquire, like how to live in the world, how to pay bills. Like, am I an adult, like just straight out the womb? Like, I don't know anything. Or do I have the capability and knowledge and understanding of an adult? You're an adult and you like you're an adult and you're you're starting off as a nursing home. So let's put that let's Right, put but it. have I lit like do I you have are, the same, you, like, you you have your you knowledge, have, wisdom, yeah. background. So you have your saying. you you have your memory. So you have everything that you have been through in this earth. So you went to school for right, but you said years. God asked the question both as you like as you're being born so where would I have this prior knowledge from? You would so have just saying it your would mind be endowed upon me. Yeah, it will be it'll be automatically down. down. Okay. It's like an iPod that's already preloaded. Okay, cool. So it's like you got it. So now that I know it's already there, absolutely. Um, I feel like for one, um, if it's already downloaded in me, I feel like I have more of an impact to make on the world immediately. Because if I'm coming out as a baby. I can't really make an influence on the world with all this, you know, with me just being a child. Right. As an adult, I can now take all the knowledge that I have and trickle it back down to younger generations, older generations. Like, I can make a difference with the information that I know as opposed to having to go through life experiences to gain knowledge. Like, I would probably be one of the most powerful people in the world. Like, I would know everything because... God would have given me all this information if I'm getting your question right. So yeah. I would choose to, and since I have the ability to keep my memory, imagine how valuable I'll be to like people in high school. Like I can give them knowledge, I can give them direction and advice and what paths to take and what paths not to take because now I am not just someone that's giving them advice. I am now their peer, but I have the knowledge of their great grandparent or their great grandmother. Right. Even though I'm only 19, I've lived the life of a 90 year old. So now I'm way more valuable to each person that I will come in contact with. Yeah. So I would choose that. Yeah, and think about like the people that's like no longer here. Like you, if you know on this day that you're gonna lose your love, and you going from old to new, think about like, okay, like if you recently lost your grandma, and I know sometime in March or April, I'm gonna lose my grandmother on this day. So I'm getting younger, so I'm going back in time, so I, I can actually, I don't know if you would show more value or more appreciation, Going back in time, like okay, like wait, I but how would I know that? 
Like all this stuff is pre like all the stuff that you've been through in the world is already in your mind when you're an old person. Compared to when you're a baby, you have to go through the stuff. Right, but you said that God you God. said that God is just giving us this information, not that we would have gone through the information because remember, it's not like we're getting a second chance at life. You're saying that it's your very first time into life. Alright, so, so you can't have that essentially you can't have that knowledge. So all right, so unless God is just giving you knowledge. So God gives you a choice to either go uh go into the world as a baby, not knowing anything. So you have to relive your way uh, relive your life the same way you have done. Right? And you just keep on going until it's that time uh, that time you get put into the dirt. Or you start off as a very old person born from death to life, meaning that you're either in the nursing home and you continue to go down to where you get like you're a, a young man and you go into, uh, you're in grade school and then you're, you're in kindergarten and stuff like that. So compared to you don't have any knowledge as a baby, going uh, progressing to a old person compared to an old person that you have all this knowledge and experience di digressing to a person who doesn't know nothing. I think I got that. I think the question is where is the knowledge coming from? Because you said that you you are going to know that your grandmother is going to pass away but only like is and if I'm knowing that, then that means I would have had to live that life before to know that she's going to pass on this day, unless God is just going to download people, dates, times, information. So now as I'm going through it, I know because I've been reminded, oh, I already have this information, but not because I've lived it, but because God downloaded it in me. Yeah. So that's what we're differentiating is this like a second life or is this more like, hey, and God also said, if you choose to be an adult, I will give you the knowledge, wisdom, background experiences as if you were already on this world. So, I think that that should have been a part of the initial question so because it's, it changes the answer. It's your, it's your knowledge that you've been through as this person that God's going to bless you with like, hey, I have your memories here that you live on, uh, that you lived on this earth. So and I know exactly what you're gonna do at age 90, age 80, age I think 20. that's great. I think Put you should have added that in the initial part of the question. Okay. So, so even still, I would my answer would still be the same. Okay. And yeah, I think I I completely agree with you that if I now have like all these dates of knowledge and information and things like that, it would absolutely be beneficial for me to, to know when someone's going to pass away. And to your point, yes, I absolutely think if your time spent with that person in that moment would be super valuable and more precious than words could ever describe. Okay. Cool. So that is the end of the game. Well, thank you for tuning in. Just want to give you that source of entertainment. Um, stay tuned for our next video. Um, hopefully, we should be doing something special. Not want to say what it is at, right now at this moment, but we will let you guys know in the upcoming video. All right. I have been Jay. This has been Kid. We'll see you guys later. Peace. Bye.